First of all, welcome. Uh, really excited to have all of you. Uh, I'm Quinn Scott. I am the federal director here at Chesapeake Climate Action Network and CCAN Action Fund. Uh, under our umbrella of CCAN Action Fund is this conversation for elections. Uh, but before we get started, just a few housekeeping things I want to make a note of. Uh, number one, uh, if you need uh, closed captioning, uh, you can activate that at the very bottom of your uh, Zoom webinar uh, browser. Uh, and if it's not uh, visible, uh, you can go to the three dots that says more and click that and you'll see it listed uh, on the drop down uh, menu there. Uh, in addition, uh, we will have a Q&A towards the end uh, of this program, uh, but we encourage you to, to uh, drop your questions into the Q&A function, uh, which is right next to closed captioning for me. Uh, and you can put your questions in there and throughout uh, we'll respond. And if we don't respond throughout, we'll uh, pick one of those questions uh, during the Q&A uh, portion uh, of the program. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, participants should be automatically muted. Uh, and so really, uh, you know, the folks who will be unmuted are our speakers this evening. Uh, so without further ado, uh, passing it along to our executive director, Mike Tidwell. Thank you, Quentin. Again, I'm Mike Tidwell, director of the Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund. And thank you for joining us tonight and welcome, welcome everyone to the Zoom call to get Kamala Harris and other climate champions elected into office on November 5th. You can feel it. This country is on fire for Kamala and we see it right here tonight. We've gotten more RSVPs tonight than for any Zoom call in the history of CCAN Action Fund. It's amazing. So we all know that climate change is an existential threat to our planet and Donald Trump is an existential threat to our democracy. And as a result, our kids and our grandkids are going to ask us for the rest of our lives, what did you do in 2024 to defeat Trump and elect Kamala Harris? Well, tonight, we're going to tell you what you can do over the next 96 days. For those of you in our home region of Maryland, Virginia, and DC, we hope you'll help us text and phone bank into tight congressional races in Maryland and Virginia. But more than anything, we hope you'll make the short trip up to Pennsylvania and knock on doors and recruit voters for Kamala Harris in that crucial swing state. And if you live outside this reason, region, come to Pennsylvania anyway for a fun road trip or simply phone or text into key races from wherever you live. In the next 60 minutes, we're going to tell you how to do all the above. We'll also show you a few, a couple of rocking, inspiring videos and treat you to a lovely live music interlude from our friends Lilo Gonzalez and his daughter Anina. This election really is about freedom. To paraphrase Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, Donald Trump hugs the flag while taking away our freedom. He tells our kids what books to read. That's not freedom. He tells women what they can do with their bodies. That's not freedom. He tells people that they can vote as long as he gets to pick the winner. Also not freedom. And no one will be free on a wrecked planet. Trump's Project 2025 plan would gut the EPA, remove incentives for EVs and wind and solar power, remove our country from the Paris Climate Agreement, and even dissolve the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It's beyond radical. But we're going to stop them. We're going to elect Kamala Harris instead and give her climate majorities in the U.S. House and Senate. But we need you to make that happen. We need you to commit to taking action. We need you to sign up and say yes and raise your hand and concretely commit in the next 60 minutes. And to help you get started, here's our first video of the evening. No one wanted it this way. Joe Biden is a good man, a good American, a great president. But time and the burden of the office means it's time to step aside, to put a warrior into the political arena, ready to take on Donald Trump, to face Trump. 
Trump and Project 2025 will impose. Vice President Kamala Harris is ready, experienced, and as a tough prosecutor, Kamala Harris dealt with men like Trump all the time. Rapists, con men, frauds, criminals. She's used to guys like Trump, used to putting them in their place. Do we believe in opportunity? Do we believe in the promise of America? Kamala Harris will bring something to Trump he's rarely seen. Justice. Wow, what a great video that is. I've seen that video like 20 times and every time it gives me uh, goosebumps. Um, so uh, thank you so much again for being here. Uh, really excited to talk about our plans for uh, this election. Uh, but first, uh, I just want to share uh, a little bit about what excites me about uh, this election. Uh, so yesterday I was actually in the Capitol building and I was walking through the rotunda. Uh, and there's an oil painting of George Washington handing over his resignation letter as commander in chief after the Revolutionary War. Uh, if you've been to the Capitol, you're probably familiar with this uh, painting uh, that I speak, I'm speaking about. Um, it's a reminder that uh, at the height of Washington's power and influence, he willingly stepped aside and seamlessly transitioned uh, power to the next uh, generation. Uh, it's hard to not connect the moments that we are going through right now with that historical moment. And the courage and leadership that President Biden showed uh, to do the right thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, I was honestly fearful uh, that we were like a nation of zombies just marching towards this inevitable cliff where Project 2025 would be our reality. Uh, seemingly at every pivotal moment in the last year, events kept breaking in favor of Trump and nothing could take him down. But uh, on this beautiful Sunday evening, two weeks ago, uh, that all changed. Uh, and I imagine for years to come, we'll actually be talking about where we were when that announcement was made. Uh, immediately, we got a massive uh, jolt of energy right into our hearts. Secan Action Fund endorsed Kamala Harris uh, within hours of that announcement. Uh, in the days following, uh, the most common word that I kept hearing from all my friends was relief. Uh, on every climate co coalition call that I was on last week, there was excitement rippling through the climate movement. Polls have Harris tied in battleground states like Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, later. States like Georgia and Arizona that were out of reach for Biden are now back on the table. Uh, this is quite an exciting time for us. It was also an exciting time when I joined CCAN uh, Action Fund in January 2021. The Biden-Harris administration uh, has accomplished so much in the last three years uh, on climate uh, with the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, with the CHIPS Act, and of course the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, but not just those three big bills. This year alone, uh, the EPA finalized historic regulations to regulate power uh, uh, pollution from power plants. Uh, and when I say historic, I'm not kidding. Uh, in April of 2024 was the first time power plants were regulated for pollution in our country's history. Like, just think about how long we've been burning fossil fuels for energy, and we just put regulations on pollution just this year. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And so by the time we get to 2032, 90% of our carbon pollution could be eliminated from our power sector, ultimately shutting down coal plants and gas power plants uh, for the future. But that's all contingent on this next administration actually seeing this through because these regulations are just coming into play now. The next administration can walk away from that promise. Uh, and so for me, that alone makes it, this a very easy choice. Uh, so uh, on my uh, phone, I have a app that keeps track of exactly uh, how many days we have until election day. And it is 95 days and exactly 11 hours before polls open on the East Coast uh, uh, for uh, this election. Uh, so I encourage you all to get a countdown clock to make sure that we aren't wasting time between now uh, and election day. So let's talk about what we're uh, going to do to make sure that we uh, win on the end of election day. Uh, our efforts will be focused on three states, 
Uh, we're going to be in Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. Uh, Maryland is a safe blue state. Uh, we've endorsed Angela also Brooks, who has the opportunity to be uh, the first uh, Black woman uh, to represent the state of Maryland in the U.S. Senate. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we also expect Harris will uh, you know, win at the top of the ticket. Uh, so if you live in Maryland, what we're actually asking you to do is lend your time to go help us win in Virginia and Pennsylvania, uh, which are much more critical uh, to the outcome uh, of not just for the presidency, but who controls Congress ultimately. Uh, in Virginia, uh, we'll be uh, obviously electing uh, Harris at the top of the ticket, but also uh, Tim Kaine is up for re-election. Uh, you know, he's uh, been, uh, an incumbent senator, uh, and so he is, uh, you know, up on his opponent by six points uh, by the latest polls. Uh, so he's relatively safe, uh, but we want to make sure that we maintain control of the Senate, uh, because uh, as we know, with Manchin retiring, uh, we are going to automatically lose that seat. And so we're going to go back to a 50-50 Senate, but only 50-50 if we hold on to every seat that we currently have this cycle. So Tim Kaine is going to be important. But we have also have two really important House races uh, to help us flip uh, the House uh, so they can actually be functional again. And so those two races uh, are in uh, Northern Virginia, uh, Abigail Spamberger uh, has decided not to run for re-election. Uh, she's going to run for uh, governor in Virginia. So that's an open seat. Um, we need to make sure that we hold on to it. And then in Virginia Beach, uh, uh, the second congressional district, which is uh, currently occupied by Jen Kagans, who is a Republican, uh, but very vulnerable. Uh, we have an opportunity to not only flip that seat, but it could be one of those critical seats that helps us take back that majority. Because as we know, Republicans only have what is it at this point? I think a three seat majority is very thin. And so if we take one of those seats, we've already closed the gap by one third. Uh, so we're going to uh, lend our energy to uh, winning in that race. Uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, our two, our biggest priority, and we're going to hear a lot more about this uh, a little later, uh, is getting uh, Harris elected. And then their senator, Bob Casey, is up for re-election. He's similar to Tim Kaine. He's an incumbent senator. He's got a lot of name recognition and is popular there. But all reports are this is his toughest re-election yet. Uh, and so we want to make sure that, you know, we're uh, getting him re-elected uh, for all the same reasons that we need to get uh, Tim Kaine uh, elected as well. Uh, so now I just told you where we're going, but what are we going to actually do when we get there? Uh, so as we all know, the most effective tactic is door knocking uh, and talking to uh, voters face to face. Uh, just last weekend, I knocked doors for the Harris campaign in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. It's so easy and fun to do. Uh, you can go onto the website uh, and we're going to, by the way, we're going to share out the links to these websites so you can uh, you know, uh, choose a location for yourself. But when you get uh, to the website, there's multiple locations. You can go to Bucks uh, County. Montgomery County or Philadelphia County or York County. There's a bunch of different options on the website. Uh, find one that's close to you or a place you're excited to knock doors. Uh, and then they also have multiple different times. You can knock doors at 9, 12, or 3. Uh, for me, I chose noon uh, to give me enough time to drive up from the D.C. area. Um, and, uh, you know, and they're really good. Their team is really professional. Uh, they do a confirmation call the night before to make sure that you're actually showing up. They then send you a text the next morning with the location and time of the time shift you signed up for. And for, I was a, actually a little late uh, from driving up from D.C. that they called me at 1215 to make sure that I was still coming. And I had to let them know traffic got in the way, but I'm going to make it. Uh, so they're on top of it. Uh, you're going to get about 50 to 60 doors to knock in two or three hours. Uh, you might only have, you know, five or six conversations in that time period, but that's going to make a tremendous difference. Uh, I remember Michelle Obama in 2016 telling a crowd in Philadelphia that her husband only won Pennsylvania in 2012 by an average of one vote per precinct. Uh, one of those votes could have been one of my five conversations. So, like... Don't think that, you know, you're not having a huge impact because you only talk to two or three people. Uh, every voter counts. Um, and so it's a great fun activity uh, to uh, for the family. Uh, you know, if you're going to the Philadelphia, you can go get a Philly cheesesteak, knock some doors, go to a museum and then come back uh, home. So 
I encourage you to uh, go knock doors. And I do need to be very clear uh, that CCAN Action Fund will not be organizing uh, canvases directly. Uh, it is very labor intensive and expensive to run a canvas. And so, you know, we don't have the capacity to actually do that. So we're encouraging folks to like go directly uh, uh, canvas with the campaign. Because we are an independent expenditure, we cannot directly coordinate and communicate uh, with the campaign, but we can share publicly available information with you. And anything that's on a website uh, is publicly available information. And so uh, we're gonna share uh, those links with you uh, throughout, uh, not only just tonight, but throughout this campaign, we're gonna keep re-upping it. Uh, you know, anytime they update the website with new Canvas opportunities, we're gonna update you on Canvas opportunities. Uh, and so, you know, you can count on us to deliver that information. Uh, but when you're not knocking doors for the Harris campaign, you can volunteer with us directly. Uh, and some of the things that we're uh, uh, organizing, uh, we're going to be making phone calls every Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and we're going to be calling folks who are climate, uh, you know, uh, in, in our database, we can uh, target voters who are very committed or care about climate and environmental issues. Uh, but also we can target folks who might care about those things but maybe they're a low propensity voter and just need a little encouragement. So we're gonna be calling them to encourage them to actually show up. Uh, we'll also be calling newly registered voters. Uh, I recently attended a conference that said, uh, from the time you register to vote and uh, to the first time you get a communication from uh, a campaign or a progressive organization is 269 days. We need to close that gap. And that's what we're gonna do uh, with these phone calls. Uh, we also found out that the different uh, folks who are the most active voters, they get about 10 communications uh, every election cycle. And if you're a newly registered voter, you only get six. So that difference between whether you vote or not is four communications. And so we're gonna like close that gap. So we're gonna be calling those folks. And by the way, our first phone banks are, are gonna be uh, next Tuesday, August uh, 6th. Uh, and in just a bit, we're going to share those links uh, around. Uh, also, uh, we're going to have text banking. Uh, text banking is going to be really focused on, uh, you know, persuasion of undecided voters uh, and also uh, getting out the vote. Uh, so, you know, you will hear more about the text banking, uh, you know, uh, in a few weeks. Uh, we also have voter registration of college students, which you'll hear more about from our next speaker. Uh, we're also doing vote tripling. Uh, for those on the call that did vote tripling with us in 2022 during the midterms, you know how much uh, fun that is. Um, and so basically what vote tripling is, you're going to stand out in front of an early vote location. Uh, any voter that comes out of that polling location after voting, we're going to thank them and then ask them to text three friends or family members to remind them to go vote. Uh, this tactic was first used in 2018 and it's been proven that it's a great way to turn out voters. Uh, we're gonna also be partnering with Third Act in the DMV area to do postcard writing. Uh, and when we get more details, we're gonna share that as well. Uh, I know that was a lot of information, uh, but don't you worry. Uh, we're gonna email everyone, uh, you know, all of our opportunities, we're going to also uh, send around this recording an email to you tomorrow, uh, and we're going to make sure that we keep you all updated uh, throughout this process. We're also going to have another volunteer meeting in early September, uh, because as we know, things can change very quickly in an election cycle. So a month from now, we'll come back together and talk about what we're going to you know and make sure that we have the latest information and the latest opportunities to take action. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to my good friend, Jamie DeMarco, uh, who was our Maryland director, but as of today is rejoining the federal team, uh, and he's going to be our point of contact uh, leading our Pennsylvania efforts. And so that's what he's going to talk to you about. Thank you, Quentin. It's an exciting day and it's an exciting time. It's just um, feeling hopeful and rejuvenated and energized in a way that seemed impossible just two weeks ago. Everything that I have to say boils down to this. This race is gonna be really close and grassroots voter mobilization will likely determine the outcome. More than hundred million people are gonna vote in this general election, but the winner is likely gonna be determined by just a few tens of thousands of votes in a few key states. Volunteers phone banking, door knocking, letter writing, and generally getting out the vote can absolutely make the difference in this election that is gonna be that close. As 
Gwen was alluding to, you know, Biden won Pennsylvania in 2020 by just 80,000 votes, about 1.2% of the total vote count. Hillary lost it in 2016 by just 44,000 votes, less than 1% of all the votes cast. And we should also remind ourselves that in the year 2000, George Bush won Florida by just 537 votes. That small number tipped control of the White House and had so many cascading consequences. If everyone on this call just got a few votes in Florida in the year 2000, we could have actually changed the outcome of that. And I think um, the most recent polling shows that Trump and Harris are literally tied in Pennsylvania. So this is gonna be close. Pennsylvania is the biggest toss up state in this election. And we need to act like getting even just a few thousand more votes for Harris in Pennsylvania could make the difference in control of the White House because it could. Together, we're gonna to do everything in our power to do just that, even as we continue to make sure that states like Virginia continue to vote for climate champions. Today, I'm gonna to offer you three opportunities to help Harris win in Pennsylvania. Phone banking, registering college students to vote, and increasing early voting. Someone is gonna be sharing a um, link in the chat where you can sign up to these opportunities. And if you can't make it to Pennsylvania, then phone banking is for you. In August, we're gonna be hosting phone banks every Tuesday night from six to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Starting in September, we're gonna increase that to twice a week. Um, Tuesday night and Wednesday night, we'll be phone banking from six to 8 p.m. Eastern time. We won't always be calling just into Pennsylvania. We're gonna call wherever is needed most in this region but we are gonna focus on Pennsylvania, especially as we get closer to election day. Wherever you are, whatever your physical ability, you can spend time on the phone bank. I've had really incredible conversations, phone banking and conversations that never would have otherwise happened. I really enjoy doing it. It's a blast, it's impactful. So please sign up. Can we get that link tree put in the chat? Because we are actually gonna pause here and not move forward with the rest of the program until we have 50 people signed up to phone bank. Um, Quentin or Nicole, does one of you have the link tree that we can paste into the chat? Okay, the link that just got put in the chat, click that link and right there where it says make calls, either Tuesday nights or Wednesday nights, click one of those things at the very top and sign up. Um, when we're done, when I'm done, we're actually going to hear from a musical interlude, which will be really enjoyable and pleasant. So we want to get through this quickly. If we can, just go ahead and sign up for those calls. We're not going to move ahead with the rest of the call until we get 50 signups. So if you're not planning to sign up, just go ahead and actually sign up because now is the time to do it. Quinn is monitoring on the back end. Quinton, can you tell me how many folks are currently signed up? We're starting with here. Yeah, it says 11, but I think that was you that signed up for all those 11 shifts. So <laughs> I did sign up for a lot of shifts earlier. Yeah. Today. So everyone should follow Jamie and do 11 shifts. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I, I was on, on, on it all. <laughs> well, they're coming in fast. I, they just doubled. I just signed up. Okay. Thank you, Mike. It'll be good to be on with you. And we're gonna have fun little chats at the start of these calls. It's like, an, it's like a little book club, but you're making phone banks to save democracy and the climate. Wow, these signups are happening very quickly. We might get 50 for both. Oh yes, it is, it is five to seven. The Tuesday night is actually five to seven, the Wednesday is six to eight. Thanks for that clarification, Bill. So pick the one that works better for your time. You said they're coming in quick, Quentin. Where are we? Uh, we have um, we have 48 just for Tuesday alone. Wow. Yeah, so Lynn, the way you sign up is you click that link um, that Lynn and Arlene have put in the chat. And then once you click that link, click one of those two buttons at the top that say make calls. And then once you're on that page, fill in your information, scroll down and press attend as yourself. Well, Jamie, we've uh, hit our 50. All right, congratulations, everyone. This is an exciting time. We're already making waves. So um, phone banking is absolutely an important thing to do. If you are able to make it to Pennsylvania, we highly encourage you to come physically to Pennsylvania. The first opportunity you're gonna have to do that with CCAN Action Fund is the last week of August, August 26th, 
is we are going to be out in public spaces near colleges and universities registering college students to vote. In 2016, fewer college students voted than in 2022. And that percentage difference could have made all the difference. In 2016, it was 52% of college students voted and climate champions didn't win the state. In 2020, 66% of college students voted, roughly an additional 100,000 votes larger than the vote difference in 2020. And Joe Biden, climate champion, was able to win that state. The difference in the final code in Pennsylvania, I feel confident, is going to be smaller than the number of unregistered college students in Pennsylvania. Most colleges and universities start that Monday, August 26th. So we are going to be there that first week that they're on campus when open to new ideas and exciting times and inviting people to um, register to vote right there and then. So you can also sign up for that by clicking that same link um, and going in and signing up for one of those um, opportunities to join registering college students to vote. The last thing I want to mention is that we are also have an exciting opportunity to increase early voting in Pennsylvania. Early voting pays a lot of dividends. If somebody votes early, they're guaranteed to vote. That's one less person in line on election day. Maybe someone else who wasn't going to have time to vote is able to vote. Pennsylvania technically doesn't have in-person early voting, but anyone can go to their county seat, request a mail-in ballot, fill it out right there and then, and return it, which is effectively in-person early voting. So there's going to be a few weeks in October where that is available. This is the first non-pandemic presidential year where that's available. Many people don't know about it. We're gonna be standing in front of those high traffic county seats in um, dense areas and encouraging people to walk in and vote right there and then. That is the majority of the links that you see on that Linktree link. When you click it, um, all those ones that say street canvassing in different counties, click on one of those and um, sign up in order to get the opportunity to increase early vote in Pennsylvania. Um, as people come out, we'll encourage them to text three friends in order to triple their vote. Those are the three opportunities. All the links that we're talking about today are in that one link. So if you click that one link where you've signed up to phone bank, bookmark that, save it, email it to yourself, whatever you need to do to save that one link, that'll have access to all the other links. As with all things in life, the key to making the biggest difference is doing something consistently. You know, if you go to the gym one time and work out, you're not going to notice a difference in your muscles. But if you can go consistently week after week for long enough, you're actually going to notice a difference. Similarly, if you just volunteer one day to elect Harris, that is going to have a much smaller impact than if you can do it consistently week after week from now until election day. So let's all make a commitment here and now in our own minds to sign up, either door knocking with the Harris campaign or with one of the many opportunities to volunteer with CCAN Action Fund and commit to doing it regularly and showing up between now and election day. Next, I have the honor to introduce Lilo Gonzalez and his daughter, Anina Gonzalez. Lilo is a singer songwriter who has touched the lives of many people with his fun and thoughtful music, sending a message to adults and children of all cultures that we can and should unite for a better world. Lilo and Anina. Well, thank you very much. You know, I'm so happy to be back. Four years ago, we did it. We did it again, but today, you know, why are we here? Because this boat means the future of my kid and my grandkid. And listen, she didn't vote four years ago. Now she's nineteen. She's ready to vote. So that's why we are supporting Kamala Harris. And this is a beautiful song. That's really, since I heard a song for the first time, I fell in love. Are you ready? Sing with us. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to New Year's Island. From the red forest to the water. water. This land was made. You and me, esta tierra es tuya, esta tierra es mía, California hasta Nueva York, de los bosques, 
hasta los mares. Esta tierra es tuya y mía también. As I was walking, that river on a highway. I saw above me the endless skyway. I saw below me the golden valley. This land was paid to you and me. Esta tierra es tuya, esta tierra es mía. Desde California hasta Nueva York, desde los bosques hasta los mares. Esta tierra es tuya y mía también. This land is your land, this land is my land. California to your island, from the red forest. To the ocean waters, this land was made you and me. This land was made you and me. This land was made for you and me. En noviembre, todos a votar por Kamala Harris. Vote for Kamala Harris on November 5th. Sí, se puede. Sí, se puede. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, uh, Mary Schimmer, uh, who is our operations director. Man, I'm all teary from the singing and now I have to talk. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me to join you this evening. Um, I am so excited to be here. I think mostly because like many of us on this call, two weeks ago, I didn't think we would be. Um, I, like many of you, was dreading the November election. And we all know how much President Biden was able to accomplish in four short years. And it seemed like the media couldn't talk about anything except for his debate performance. And then after the July 13th attempt on Trump's life, the momentum that that gave him I felt even more certain that the energy of his supporters would propel him to victory. I've worked on elections since uh, 2004, um, and in that time, experienced some heartbreaking losses. And as a woman, as a queer person, I have felt the impact of those losses in my own life, across my communities, across our country, across our entire planet. And so in every election since 2004, my goal is to do whatever I can to make an impact. Even when we lose, we go down fighting. And to be honest, that's where I thought we were for 2024. Of course, in the last two decades, we have also made history in some pretty incredible ways. Uh, I have a bunch of nieces and nephews who don't know a country that has never elected a black president. They don't know a country who's never seen a woman at the top of a ballot. And those were two things that were dreams when I was a kid. And then on July 21st, with Joe Biden's extraordinary act of patriotism, we were all reminded that the work of democracy is so much bigger than one person. When he recognized the moment to pass the torch to the next generation, he changed everything. And it was a moment that we didn't know we could hope for and that we didn't know we were waiting for. But now we have a candidate in Vice President Harris whose leadership, infectious energy, and track record of fighting for our climate and our communities has already made history. So the media might have been waffling about an open primary for a couple of days, but my friends and I had already gotten to work and we're really excited to be continuing that work. You might remember the 2016 Democratic Convention when Michelle Obama famously said, when they go low, we go high. But in 2016, we hadn't yet seen how low they were willing to go. In 2024, millions of us have been impacted by extreme heat, by devastating floods, and by wildfires. We've lost access to reproductive health care. We've lost friends and family to COVID-19. We've seen our rights and liberties threatened by Project 2025. So now we turn to Kamala Harris' slogan, when we fight, we win. And that's mobilizing the millions of us who have always known that our lives, our freedoms, our families, and our futures are worth fighting for. So we are going to make history in November. We're going to elect our country's first Black woman president. We're going to elect Maryland's first Black woman senator. And we are going to show that when we believe in our power to make history, incredible things can happen. 
So tonight, uh, I am pledging 47 hours, uh, because Kamala will be our 47th president, uh, to contact voters over the next 96 days between now and November 5th. And I warmly invite and encourage all of you to make your own pledge tonight to join me. And thank you so much for making the time this evening. It's so great to be here with all of you. Thank you, Mary. I love the symbolic uh, commitment of 47 hours. I love it. Uh, next up uh, is our uh, wonderful organizer, Zippy Horowitz, uh, who was unfortunately unable to uh, be with us this evening. However, uh, we want to make sure we shared a video uh, of their words. Uh, so cue the video. Good evening, CCAN volunteers, and thank you for joining us. My name is Zippy Horowitz. I use she, her pronouns, and I am CCAN's Maryland Campaigns Coordinator. My first time diving into politics in a serious way came in 2020. It can be easy to forget now just how bad things got after 2016, but back then it was crystal clear every single day. Having just come out of the closet, I saw laws getting passed every day, hate speech targeted at me and people like me just slipping through the cracks. And I knew I had to do something. So I signed up to be a campus organizer for Bernie Sanders. My second day on the job, we were called into a meeting. They had let us know that the day's training would be canceled because they had to be upfront with us and let us know that our candidate had just had a heart attack and that we were going to sit down, have all the conversations that we needed, and then we were going to organize, and we were going to win. And that February in New Hampshire, we did. And because of that, it showed in the progressive policies that were on the table because of the power that we built together. The work that we did in 2020 paid off time and time again, with rule after rule from the EPA bringing us towards a safer world for all of us and giving us an administration that doesn't back down from or help bigots. The last few months have been really, really difficult. They've made it seem more real that we might lose the progress that we've made and that we've fought so hard for. But something feels different in the air this week. And I know that you can feel it too when she says it. We're not going back. Because I know that none of you are going to let that happen. Because when I ask you to commit to join us on the phones and call for Kamala Harris for president, I know that you'll do your best to make it to as many shifts as you can before November. So please, please click the link in the chat to sign up for a time to join us on Tuesday evenings from now until November from 5 to 7 p.m. We'll walk you through every step of the process from your first dial until you're a pro at getting out the vote for Kamala. Now, what we do is about so much more than one shift, one call, or one vote. It's about rebuilding the ties that have torn apart through the years of the pandemic and the divisiveness that came with it. So what we need to do now more than ever is to connect with one another and more passionately than we have before. This group that has gathered here tonight might be from all over the country, but that does not mean we are not one community. So I invite you once again to please click on the link below and join our online community on Discord. This is a place for us to be together, to gather, to share what we're proud of, to share our fears when news gets tough, and to figure out how we can help each other win. Once you sign up, you'll see a page with information and instructions about how the program works. And if you're still having trouble after reading the instructions, please feel free to email me and we'll help you get set up because everyone's voice matters in these next few months more than ever. Thanks for fighting together with us. Let's go win. Thank you, Zippy. Uh, and just to let folks know, uh, the Discord uh, that Zippy mentioned is also uh, is the last uh, button on the 
a link tree. Uh, so you can click that button, uh, sign up for Discord. It allows you to communicate with uh, folks on this call and others in our community. Uh, I, I saw a question about you know, coordinating carpools uh, to Pennsylvania and Discord would be a really good platform for us to sort of coordinate those efforts. Uh, and, you know, and as you know, over the next few weeks, we can help you get signed up and uh, used to those tools um, as we go through the process. Uh, I'm going to check our uh, RSVPs for our phone banks, because after the last two speakers, I know I'm psyched to do more shifts. Uh, all right, we're like stuck at 68 for Tuesdays and stuck at 43 for Wednesday. So let's let's get a few more shifts on those days, uh, especially uh, after uh, Mary's uh, challenge of 47 uh, hours between now and uh, election day. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, we wanna take some time uh, to answer some of the questions uh, that have been popping up uh, in the chat. Uh, and so uh, I'm just gonna kind of run through it. Uh, so how does the phone banking work? Uh, happy to explain that. Uh, so uh, we are gonna be using something called a, a predictive dialer. Uh, and what that allows you to do is you'll use your own phone but you will call uh, a number to connect with this dialer. Uh, this dialer will mask your own personal phone number. Uh, the number that will come up on someone's caller ID is a local number that we'll choose. Uh, we find that uh, when you choose, you know, when you have numbers from outside of someone's area, they don't answer those phone calls. So we wanna make sure that we have a local area code wherever we're calling. Uh, so they're more likely to pick up the phone. So your phone number will not be visible. We'll choose that number. Uh, and while you're connected to the dialer system, uh, it will uh, make the phone dials for you. Uh, so all you have to do is just wait till you hear a beep. And when you hear that beep, that means somebody's on the other side ready to hear, listen to you. Uh, this system allows us to be very efficient with your time that you commit to us. Uh, and so you'll only talk to people who answer the phone. Uh, anybody who is, uh, any phone number that is dialed and they don't answer, we have a system that automatically, uh, you know, leaves a voicemail after three attempts. So you don't have to worry about folks not answering. You're going to only talk to people who answer and your phone number will be protected by the system. Uh, the more people we have on the dialer, the more folks we can talk to, the more effective the system is uh, because the system uh, can only call out like uh, three dials per uh, user. So the more users, the more dials. Uh, so that's my pitch to get more folks uh, on uh, uh, the dialer system. Um, also, I saw a question about, are there more dates? Uh, there are more dates for phone banking. Uh, when you click on the Tuesday or uh, Wednesday link, uh, there's actually a drop down menu that lists all the dates. Uh, you can sign up for any shift between now uh, and uh, November 5th uh, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So yeah, just make sure you hit, uh, you expand the list to see the additional dates that are beyond the ones that are uh, coming up here immediately. Uh, Jamie, are there any other questions that you saw in the chat that we should uh, answer? Somebody asked if there's a particular summary of Project 2025 that we would recommend. Hmm. We'll email it to you in our yeah. in our email that we send around. We'll send a nice link to that. Yeah, we'll send a nice link to project about project twenty twenty five. I also think I saw a question about uh, Harris's record on climate, uh, which is pretty substantial. Uh, there was a great New York Times article that ran earlier this week, uh, really highlighting everything that she has done uh, when she was uh, state's attorney. Uh, in Cali San Francisco, an attorney general in California, she was the head of the curve on uh, a lot of the climate things that are normal for states to do now. She did it you know, 15, 20 years ago. We also have a call. Will people be doing fundraising on these calls or just persuasion? You want to take that, Quentin? Yeah, uh, we are not doing any fundraising. Uh, it is all persuasion. Uh, yeah, really simple. All persuasion all the time. And then getting out the vote once we get past persuasion. Someone else asked about scripts during the call. Who will provide the scripts? Yeah, uh, we're going to be writing the scripts uh, and we will have the script loaded into the dialer system. Uh, 
And before you even start making calls, uh, we'll go through the script. Uh, before the system starts dialing, it'll actually give you a preview of what it looks like. So you can do a little practicing uh, before you hit the start button. Uh, and then once you hit the start button, uh, the dialer system will start making calls for you. Uh, and if at any time you need to like take a bathroom break or uh, you just need to walk around for a bit, uh, you can always hit pause uh, and it'll stop and then pick back up when you're ready to uh, make more calls. Quentin, there was um, a request to explain street canvassing again. Yeah, Jamie, you want to take the street canvassing one? Because that yes. Is so there's uh, an opportunity in Pennsylvania where you can go to the county seat, you know, your county government office, and say, "I would like a mail-in ballot." And in Pennsylvania, anyone can request a mail-in ballot. They will give it to you right there and then. You can fill it out right there and then and return it. But this is not something a lot of people know that they can do. So we will be standing in front of those county offices, which are all high traffic sidewalks, and saying like, hey, passerby, do you know that you can vote for Kamala Harris right here, right now, today? And you can actually go inside and do that. Encourage them to go inside, request their ballot, fill it out, and return it. As they come outside, we'll say, congratulations, wasn't that fun? Don't you want to text three friends and encourage them to do that too? And we can hopefully really spread the knowledge that you can vote early, you can vote early in person by requesting that mail-in ballot. Um, and that is what we're, I'm honestly really, that's the tactic I am most excited about. And it's what most of the links are in that link tree, different counties, offices doing that. So I encourage folks to sign up and it'll be a lot of fun. And Jamie, someone wrote that they're not seeing volunteer slots for voter registration on college campuses. Let me um, just share that to everyone really quick to make sure that it is available. And thanks everyone for your questions. Thanks for your patience. This is the first day of our electoral campaign. Literally, we're launching it today. We have some glitches to work out, but the most important thing is you're on the call, uh, you're engaged, you're asking questions, and you're going to be in good hands with us, whether you're calling, texting, on campuses, canvassing, you're going to be in good hands with us. Yeah. And Jamie just dropped in the link into the chat to uh, sign up to register for college students. Yeah, we'll make sure we get that added to the uh, link tree as well. Registering college students to vote is also one of the most enjoyable things to do, I think. Um, will county seats be open on October 14th? Uh, we would have to check the website uh, to see uh, if they are open, but uh, it's probably possible that they're closed on that day. But we'll make sure before we, well before we get to October 14th. All right, uh, maybe one more question. Uh, where are these colleges? Yeah, so the three colleges that we're targeting um, are Temple, Drexel, uh, and Penn University. Which are all in Philadelphia. All right. Um, any final questions from the panelists that you might, that you flagged that we should answer? Uh, why not Penn State? Uh, yeah, so uh, we're not doing all the colleges and Penn State is just outside of the region that we're selected. We're really focused on uh, Philadelphia and the surrounding uh, suburbs is our focus uh, for our work. Uh, we just don't have the capacity uh, to take on the whole state. Uh, if we but had- If enough people sign up. Well, right, exactly. If enough people sign up, we can expand our program. That's a great pitch. Jamie, always organizing. That's why he's going up there. <laughs> yeah, I think the deadline to register to vote is 30 days before election day, but I'll double check. It's something like that. And there was a question earlier about canvassing and whether we could pair up to do the canvassing. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Uh, yes. Uh, 
you can pair up, uh, but that is something that you just make sure you make a note of to the organizers at the office that, you know, you want to knock doors with somebody. They'll either, uh, you know, wait till someone to pair you up with or whatever the process is. But uh, pairing up is not unusual. All right, Mike, why don't you bring us home? Well, we, we have a great video, one more video we're going to show before, but before we do that, I just want to thank everyone again for joining. I want to thank all the CCAN staff for speaking. Thank you, Lilo and uh, Nina for your wonderful, wonderful uh, song. Uh, this land is your land and it is my land and uh, it belongs to all of us. Um, the countdown clock, you know, um, it's a real thing. We have 96 days. We have 96 days to save our climate. We know what Trump will do to the climate. We know that Kamala Harris supports everything that the Biden administration has done over the last four years. She embodied uh, the climate action. Uh, Quentin and I were lucky enough to be in the Senate gallery, in the Senate galley, uh, uh, on uh, August, in August of 2022, when Kamala Harris broke the tie to allow uh, debate and ultimately a vote uh, in the U.S. Senate uh, that passed the Inflation Reduction Act. So we saw her make history, and we know there's more history for her to make. And speaking of history, how lucky are we? These are tough times. They're confusing times. They're scary times. But few generations have a chance to make so much difference in human history. Few generations have the chance to decide uh, a, a bright history for people to follow for decades and centuries. And we're that generation now who will stop Donald Trump and get Kamala Harris elected. Uh, we wanna show you one more video. Uh, we'll make some closing comments, uh, but go ahead, Nicole, and cue this video. One thing Kamala Harris has always been, fearless. As a prosecutor, she put murderers and abusers behind bars. As California's attorney general, she went after the big banks and won $20 billion for homeowners. And as vice president, she took on the big drug companies to cap the cost of insulin for seniors. Because Kamala Harris has always known who she represents. This campaign is about who we fight for. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. Where every senior can retire with dignity. But Donald Trump wants to take our country backward, to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations and end the Affordable Care Act. But we are not going back. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Uh, so that's what it's all about. And I, I just want to emphasize that fearlessness, um, both for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I mean, first, Joe Biden. Uh, it just took so much courage for that man to step down. Uh, I know that in his heart, he still believes that he could beat Donald Trump, but he did the most selfless act I've ever seen in my lifetime. I was born under the Kennedy administration. The first president I voted for was Jimmy Carter. Uh, but Joe Biden showed more courage, more patriotism uh, than I've ever seen from any elected official in my lifetime. So I know we all tip our cap to Joe Biden. And thank you, Joe Biden, for selecting Kamala Harris. Uh, because also incredibly courageous. And I, I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but, you know, the previous president, Donald Trump, was just, there was an assassination attempt. The amazing courage that it takes for anyone to run for president in this divided country right now is extraordinary. The level of commitment, the fearlessness, the physical fearlessness to run for president. And Kamala Harris is doing that because she believes in this country. She, she's sacrificing uh, so much to 
put the country ahead. Um, and I just want to recognize that. And I want to say that if she can do that, if she can make that level of commitment and muster that level of courage, surely we can volunteer a few hours. Surely we can spend some evenings making phone calls instead of, you know, watching Netflix or, you know, hanging out with friends somewhere. Um, we've got 96 days to show that we're as courageous as Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We have 96 days to show all generations that come after us that we understood our moment, we understood the opportunity and privilege that we had at this moment in history to make a difference. And that's why I'm so honored to be part of this group. I'm so honored to be part of this community with all of you. I'm going to give everything I can to this effort to elect a climate majority in the US House and the Senate and get Kamala Harris in the White House because nothing else matters in my lifetime right now, and I know nothing else matters in yours. So dig deep, give us your time, make a commitment, raise your hand, speak up, uh, get involved, canvas. We've got some creative things for you to, to do in Pennsylvania, some really novel and, and amazing history-making actions that you can take. We're gonna follow up with an email. We're gonna make it as easy as possible. We're gonna send you all these links. You don't have to memorize anything for tonight because we're gonna follow up with information. We're going to answer your questions by email, and you're going to be in good hands with us. You're, we, those the, the folks that you heard tonight are experienced organizers. This is not their first rodeo. They've been in electoral campaigns before. They know how to manage volunteers. They know how to make the best use of your precious time. We're committed to you. We want you to be committed to this campaign, and uh, this is day one of our campaign, so it was so great to have you join us. Uh, thank you again to all our speakers, and uh, let's go get them for the next 96 days. Everyone have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.